like, what's up to Minnesota, y'all? Uh, we'll be playing some hockey today. <laughs> Please welcome Transition Age student Yaya Abdi Dikir. My goal is to take computer science and minor in business management. And I think both fields are trending. If I do that, I think I'll be good to go for a while. Working and volunteering and preparing for college. I just tell them to follow their dreams, follow their passion. You can do it if you say you might do it. For more podcasts with a blindness perspective, check us out on the web at www.blindabilities.com, on Twitter at BlindAbilities, and download our free BlindAbilities app from the App Store. That's two words, Blind Abilities. And now available on Android from the Google Play Store. And that's two words, Blind Abilities. My resume looked enticing and they accepted me, so it was very cool. Enable the Blind Ability skill on your Amazon device just by saying, Enable Blind Abilities abilities job etiquette for the most part it was all about professionalism like say you're eating some dinner with your employer and then kind of utensils holding and stuff like that it was basically about how to look professional to your employer kind of thing it was cool (laughs) and now here's yaya talking about the pathway he has chosen to achieve his goals and choose the career that he wants You'll be the first to know when I become a billionaire. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Welcome to Blind Abilities. I'm Jeff Thompson. And today in the studio, we have a transition age student who has been doing all sorts of stuff to get ready for college. He's aiming to go into computer programming, IT, all sorts of stuff like that. He's kind of a geek, I guess, if you want to call him. I call him Hollywood, but his name is Yaya Abdi Kadir. How are you doing? I'm doing good, sir. How about you? Good, good. You got some big plans coming up. I do. (laughs) University of Minnesota? Yes, sir. All right. But on your way there, I met you up when you were with the summer transition program when you were visiting SSB, State Services for the Blind. You did. It was fun meeting you there. Yeah. How was the program? I mean, I'm not going to lie. It was good. Uh, I got to meet some cool people and got to make some friends along the way. And yeah, (laughs) it was fun. And for our listeners, the Summer Transition Program, STP as it's known, is a two-week summer program held at St. Thomas University for college-bound students. And the Summer Transition Program helps them build confidence and gain the skills to enhance their opportunities while they prepare for college and ultimately enter the workplace. Yaya, what is the curriculum like at the STP program? So every year they have something different. So like this year was about... uh, Job etiquette, for the most part, it was all about professionalism. Like, say you're eating some dinner with your employer and then kind of utensils holding and stuff like that. It was basically about how to look professional to your employer kind of thing. Kind of suave. Yeah, it was cool. (laughs) One of the big programs, Blind and Socially Savvy, is a program that State Services for the Blind has been supporting through training centers and programs where students get the opportunity to engage in and learn all about the necessary soft skills that help people engage in conversations, in first impressions, and one, for example, etiquette at the dinner table. And here's Lisa Larges from State Services for the Blind talking about the impact that Blind and Socially Savvy can have on transition age students. Learning those soft skills has been really important and it will take you a long way. Having that kind of confidence, being able to introduce yourself to people, those first impressions make a huge difference. So I'd recommend that young adults take those classes, do reading about it, practice, put yourself in situations where you feel just a little bit uncomfortable. It's really good to develop. I think that's fantastic. I think it's really great what State Services for the Blind is doing to help enhance these programs by bringing in blind and socially savvy. And you yourself, by attending this, you're being able to take what you've learned into the jobs that you have. And yeah, yeah, you got quite a few jobs right now. Oh, yeah. And one of them is at a middle school. Totally. So how'd you come about that job? Just for the middle school one, I worked with me with my SSB coordinator too. And I landed this middle school job for, because I used to teach middle school previously with, I used to be enrolled in this course called DP. It was a highly competitive course in high school in where you get two credits from Mankato State University for just enrolling in that course. And we used to teach sixth graders about drugs and stuff. 
and I guess my resume looked enticing and they accepted me. So it was very cool. You sold them on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. Was your visual impairment any problem for you? Not really. What kind of assistive technology do you utilize? For my day-to-day activities, I usually use the MacBook for the most part because I kind of like using the Mac because I'm kind of I'm kind of more familiar with it. Mm-hmm. Even though I'm getting familiar with the Microsoft right now because... I kind of volunteer for Microsoft too. So Mac and iPhone and the iPad Pro. Those are the three things I use currently and the Windows sometimes. So when you're talking Windows, Mac, and other tools like that, you also do some work with Apple, Microsoft, and Google, three small little companies. (laughs) Yeah, I do. What kind of work is that? For Apple, I volunteer for them for the accessibility thing. I'm an accessibility specialist. I just make sure everything is working fine order and send them my feedback and stuff and they change what needs to be changed and then implement it and then later on they release it to the public basically and for microsoft i generally do the same thing except for sometimes i do windows technical support like today i was helping eagle ridge the middle school i currently work at resolve some windows issues and i had to contact uh richard because i didn't know how to do that thing too so you know it's all about it's all about, it's all about the learning experience too so Mm-hmm. So, like, it was fun. So, how did you get connected with State Services for the Blind? Saw Ashlyn when I was, like, sophomore in high school, I guess. Two years ago. Oh. I saw Ashlyn. I guess it just happened. And Ashlyn's a counselor at State Services for the Blind. Yeah, she's my counselor currently. In the state of Minnesota, State Services for the Blind gets involved with students, transition age students, as early as age 14. And this relationship between SSB and the teachers of the blind and visually impaired in the school districts enables not only the student, but along with the parents, the teachers of the blind and visually impaired, and the counselors to all come together to make sure that they have a seamless transition from high school to college and ultimately the workplace and here's ssb counselor ashlyn cahill to talk about this relationship the great thing is is that all counselors here when they're working with a student we work closely with anyone they're working with at their school so we work with their bvi teachers their o m instructors special education teachers we really work as one unit and as a team to help that student achieve their goals and make sure that the transition from high school to their goals post high school are achieved So how did you find out about the summer transition program? And what did you think that would bring you? The first year, I found out from my vision teacher. And then I was like, this sounds cool. I've always like wanted to go explore uh, St. Thomas and stuff. And when I found out they were were doing the summer transition program thing on St. Thomas, I was like, sweet. And since my friend wanted to go there, I was like, cool. I'll tell you all about it. (laughs) I went there for the first year, two weeks. It was was cool. We did a lot. I got to visit SSB twice it was cool and my vision teacher encouraged me kind of to go there cool and your vision teacher is someone from the public schools yeah she is well that's great that they relay that information and get you out there because that's two years there and you're aiming to go to the university of minnesota and what are you going to be taking up my goal is to take computer science and minor in business management because i think both fields are trending currently mm-hmm. if i do that i think i'll be to go for a while like in life yeah i think the computers and technology will be around for a while true you got a good start by volunteering doing stuff with apple microsoft google it seems like you're following a passion there how are you preparing to go to college what skills have you been working on what tools are you going to be using to succeed in college so far i've been using communication skills like advocation you advocate for yourself and your needs because i did get to visit U of M twice and I also went to visit Mankato and I talked to both of the disability services office and they were pretty flexible. Oh, that's great. So yeah. So how do you feel about the University of Minnesota? It seems like that's the one you chose. Uh, it's a big place, but I think I'll survive. <laughs> <laughs> they had more to offer or what did you like about the University of Minnesota? It's more closer and majority of my friends are going there. Plus I found great courses for computer science. So well, that's great. So as you're getting ready, what advice would you have for other students who are thinking about their education and plans and ready to start their transition process? I just tell them to follow their dreams, follow their passion. Like You can do it if you say you might do it. Mm-hmm. And if you have an opportunity for the STP program or a summer transition type of program, take it, right? Oh, yeah, totally. You still keep in touch with some of the other students? Uh, I do. I do keep in touch with them. 
and they said they're doing awesome. <laughs> so oh, that's great. It's very cool. That's great. So what are your hobbies? I like to program, buy apps, codes, read books, watch Netflix, and generally just go for a run. Really? What kind of running? Like jogging. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> One mile, two miles, five, ten? I usually keep it four. And yeah. then run four miles and run four miles backwards. Cool. You run four miles like, forward and then backwards? No, not backwards. Like, like go like... Two miles and two miles back. Ah, ah, I was thinking, and then backwards. <laughs> I was like, wow, you just undid everything you'd done. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Programming. So you want to program apps like for the iPhone and stuff? Ah, uh, yeah. Good stuff. Well, it's good to know that someone's coming up, going to be doing all this stuff. So as we all get older, we got someone making us programs. <laughs> Job security, totally. right? Man, if you if you start making apps and you're like, you can earn a living through that too by making apps and stuff. That seems really be something that you really like to do. Yeah, although my goal is to not make my app, my like monetize my app because I know there are some people who can't afford it in general. So that's my goal. Well, hopefully there's some big corporations that want to sleep good at night and want to pay you to make them so they can give them away for free. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it seems like you're off to a good track out of high school, taking the summer programs two years in a row, and now your eyes are on the University of Minnesota, and you got your goals set out for you. So good for you, Yaya. Thank you, sir. Is there anything else you want to tell the listeners? Well, you know, the Apple card is released, so you know you can get it if you want. Ah, it just came out. It just came out today, so yep. like in the whole, it, it's in, in America, basically. I just signed up for mine. I saw the notice came in. I went into my wallet, and there was the option, and I kept going, continue, continue, and boom. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. I got it like three weeks before you, but well, it's hey, worth it. I mean, you're volunteering. You're working for them. I mean, hey, you know, I'm just a little nobody out here in the world, and... <laughs> I feel I feel good. At least I still got a zero balance on mine. <laughs> True that, but like I feel tested that thing, and it's kind of secure. I know there were some rumors in YouTube that said like Apple Card is getting hacked and some things, but that's kind of not true because we kind of feel tested it and really did find something happened to our cards. But um, it's good. Yeah. Hopefully they'll approve your credit, you know, and you can just chill. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna send me a card. They said five to seven days, I'll get the titanium card, which is. That's everything. That's like you, Hollywood. You got to have a titanium card, right? I do have one. And the thing is, the titanium card is like, it doesn't have a CBB or a actual number. And the cool thing about the Apple card is like, you get daily cash, unlimited daily cash, basically. Cool. Like whatever you buy, you get money back. <laughs> Two, yeah, 2%. <laughs> if you buy for Apple, you get 4%. Really? Like if you spend something on iCloud or I know they're taking out the iTunes store on iOS 13 but on the app store if you buy something mm -hmm. or your recurring subscription like iCloud or Apple Music and or you just go to the app store and be like I want to buy some AirPods or something you get like 4% oh wow you can get a lot more cash free with Apple I'm going to have to battle it out with my Amazon card <laughs> It's a neat application because your approval, your sign up is pretty much pre-populated. It's just, you're you're in. And I just can't wait to get the titanium card so I can just like take some selfies with it or something, you know, just fun. Well, you don't have to worry about like security and everything. He's like, I just got my album card. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Describe your visual impairment. I can see some stuff but mostly like light perception and i can kind of discern shadows and outlines and stuff that's pretty much about me so you're using voiceover jaws whatever it takes everything is typically out there currently i'm not using voiceover no because of ios 13 you know what's the cool thing about ios 13 apple has rolled out this feature called voice control right into where you can control your phone with your own voice instead of you using voiceover and so you can just say like, instead of you saying hey siri and stuff you can just be like Right, stuff with your own voice. You can just be dictating stuff, and then at least you'd be saying the commas, periods, and whatever. But like other than that, you can just do whatever. It's kind of cool. So you've gone cold turkey. You went all in on voice control. Oh yeah, it was cool. Although it kind of feels weird sometimes speaking to just your phone. It's like, whoa, what am I doing? <laughs> oh wow. So how do you get information back off the phone then? For example, let's say you wanted to close apps, and you just be like tap app switcher, and then it'll just open your app switcher thing, and then you can just. You know how your apps are kind of numbered in like one, two, three, four kind of thing? Mm -hmm. It can just be like three and then it can close it. It's kind of cool. We got something to look forward to. And if we've got any problems, we'll just call you up.
Oh, yeah, I was thinking it's supposed to be up in September something. So I cannot mm-hmm. tell you the exact date because I, I, I don't even know myself. Even most Apple players don't know it. So. Well, I heard something about September 10th, but sometimes it's a little after that. So it might be a week after that. So we'll see. Probably. If you wait till October, you'll probably have it. <laughs> sure. It's going to be more faster too, so. That's going to be exciting. I'm kind of looking forward to this next lineup that's going to be coming out and all the information. Unless your plans upgrade to the iPhone 11. I got the 10s Max. I don't know if I really want to yet. <laughs> I'm upgrading next year, not this year. Because the thing is, I have both 10s Max and 8 Plus. So, you know, I feel like I'm good for now. I think if people are looking for a phone right now, the 8 and the 8 Plus is a good phone. I always suggested that to people that were yes. indecisive, especially if they're True. sitting on a 6 or a 5S or something like that. <laughs> and it was very affordable compared to going all out with the 10S Max. So you had the home button too. So some people really mm-hmm. like that thing, so they could use that. But if you were to upgrade them, yeah. if you were to upgrade them, you should upgrade to the MacBook Pro. The, the MacBook is on fire, man. Oh, yeah? It's the, it's the newest Resident MacBook, and it's like, it has like more processing speed. Yeah. And the old keyboard. Totally. That's what I'm going to get. The butterfly? Did they go with the butterfly or are they going with the... Actually, I think it's the butterfly. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to get. <laughs> yeah, I'm at the point now. I have the one that is going to blow up or catch on fire and won't be allowed on planes, my MacBook Pro. I do have a Mac, oh. but my MacBook Pro is a mid-2015 Retina display. And I checked the serial number and I called it up and they sent me a box. I got to send it in now. So you trade it in? No, I just uh, send it in. They're going to open it up and uh, tear apart the battery. I should just trade it in. You could trade it in. You can just get a brand new MacBook for your old MacBook. All right. Depending on your estimation. I'm going to take a look at September coming up here and see what Apple has to announce. See when the releases are coming up. And I might just save on to this box. You should. See, you're doing like, your job right now. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, if anyone wanted to get a hold of you, do you want to give them all your Twitter or anything like that so people can follow sure. you? My Twitter is, like, at real Yaya 101 so <laughs> it's, like, the at sign and then real, like, R-E-A-L, Yaya, Y-A-H-Y-A, and then 101, like, 101. Ah, the real Yaya 101. There you go. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I'm playing blind hockey, man. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Tell me about blind hockey. Blind hockey is basically your traditional hockey, but instead of an actual hockey thing, you have a, a puck that's kind of shaped like a pancake, I guess, because mm-hmm. that's how that kind of looks like. And so the puck has something inside it, and it has like a, some jingles inside it. It jingles, basically. And people who are blind kind of tend to uh, play either goalie or defense, and people who are sighted play forward you enjoy it yeah it's kind of fun uh plus the skating part is kind of cool because because i didn't know how to skate at first so then you know i took my fair share of uh experimentation on skating (laughs) but now i kind of learned it (laughs) so i'm good to go well that's pretty cool i did an interview with the minnesota wild blind hockey with lonnie evans it was a good time awesome man i think the benefits or the fruit of skating for the Minnesota Wild Blind Hockey Program is already happening and we're seeing some really neat things take place right now. Uh, but I'm, I'm confident that that will continue on and probably in ways that we can't even anticipate as an organization or individually. The feedback has been really positive. I think people are really grateful for this opportunity. It's just really fun to hear the excitement that kids and adults and parents and guardians have for this whole thing. And as if any of us needed any other motivation, to see those smiles and to hear the excitement about doing this is just amazing. And I I think we're just scratching the surface here. Well, this is a great opportunity. Lonnie, can you tell people who are interested in this or want to learn more about Minnesota Wild Blind Hockey, where they can go to find more information? Yes. If you go to mnspecialhockey.org. There is a link to blind hockey specifically, and you can sign up as a skater, as an individual volunteer, or as a volunteer team. That's when they first started out. Now you're on your, this is the second year they've done it, right? Yeah, this is going to be the second year. All right. The big summit, that's teams from all the way across the country. Yeah, I, I, saw the, I saw the roster yesterday, and I was like, whoa. The teams are coming from California, Washington. I'm like, whoa, cool. <laughs> there you go. It's going to be cool. 
You, you're gonna show them that this is your house, right? I'm like, welcome to Minnesota, y'all. <laughs> uh, we'll be playing some hockey today. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, yeah. I want to thank you for coming on the Blind Abilities. Good luck with the hockey. Good luck with the college. Challenge yourself. Go get them, and uh, you're gonna do great. I know you are. You'll be the first to know when I become a millionaire. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. Sounds great. We'll see you around. All right. Thank you. Be sure to contact your state services for the blind, your voc rehab, and find out what they can do for you. Live, work, read, succeed. A big shout out to Chichao for his beautiful music. You can follow Chicho on Twitter at El Chichao. Chichao. When we share what we see through each other's eyes, eyes, we can then then begin begin to bridge the gap gap between between the limited limited expectations and the reality reality of blind abilities. abilities. For more podcasts with a blindness perspective, check us out on the web at www.blindabilities.com, on Twitter at BlindAbilities, download our app from the App Store, BlindAbilities, that's two words, or send us an email at info at blindabilities.com. Thanks for listening.